I'm Chris. And I'm Mel. And together we host the podcast, Spoil Spoil My My Movie. Movie. We were watching movies anyway. And we were having in-depth conversations about those movies, too. So, we decided to share our thoughts with the world. You can expect me to gripe about inaccurate details like supposedly cold weather, but you can't see anyone's breath. And you can expect me to be totally adorable, but also psychologically deep. And by the end of each episode, we'll provide our respective ratings. Using a rating scale custom tailored to the movie in question. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts. We're everywhere. We're actually behind you right now. 105. Seti Bimco, 105, your most beleaguered podcast. Come listen (laughs) to two tired old men sigh about... No, you're not old. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, Tim. Yep, 105. Because this 105. week, we're going to the amazing, fantastic state of Florida. As we continue our, our tour of the United States, 50 Nifty United States, a regional film from each. Yeah, we're already doing Florida. I glad. mean, Tim, I would say that's an A-letter state, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. If you don't live in this country, hello, listeners in other countries, you probably know Florida. What you know right. is probably not good and... Nothing you hear today is going to change that opinion. And the movie is uh-huh. 1964's Holly Moon. <laughs> Honeymoon of, <laughs> of horror. Honeymoon of horror. Nice. <laughs> and George. It. Yep. I'm never going to get through this beginning. I got an age-old nope. question. Yeah, what's your age-old question, Tim? <laughs> You're going to love this one. Come on. Come oh, on. Am, I, am I? I bet I will. Okay. Did, did Winnie, the, Winnie the Pooh's kids, did they ever get revenge on him? For when he showed up at Bring Your Parent to School Day, you know, he showed up wearing no pants. Embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> All the time with the no pants. This raises so many questions. <laughs> it's Seti Bimco Part 2, The Revenge. The show where we create revenge sequels that nobody wanted. Seti Bimco Part 2, The Revenge. No, we're Ooh. part three at this point. Part three. Well, no, part, part two, the revenge it. season two, I guess. They Let's start, make yeah. this confusing Let me start. for the listeners. It's right. Seti Pimco, part two, the revenge. That's the uh-huh. show. We make uh-huh. up sequels that never uh-huh. were. Uh-huh. George says this is season three. It is season three because we have a new theme. We're touring the United States, regional film, writing these sequels to movies that never had them. Tim is reaching <laughs> into when, yeah. our, you our, this is like, it's like a jar and there's a number in there, one through 50. Tim will pull out this number. It corresponds to a master list. And whatever this number is, in an amazing act of on-the-fly improv, Tim and I will make up a story about it. Improv, I say, yeah. Make up a story about a character from this film that will do whatever this this deed is he pulls. Tim, what did you, what is it today? Oh <laughs> today, number two. Ah, two. Who number is two. most likely to bring an American snack to a dinner in France? And France is our one of our biggest markets outside the U.S. Not hi so. France, isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. So the movie, in case you didn't get it, because Tim garbled it up front, <laughs> uh, "Honeymoon of Horror," not to be confused with the very similarly titled "Honeymoon of Terror." Or we went honeymoon, alliterative. Yeah. Uh, um, or to be confused with "It is a collection of characters." <laughs> Oof. Redundant with horror. Uh, it's a collection of characters. I. This is a real movie that, as I was watching it, uh, well, there's a saga of this one. I don't want to get into it yet, Wait, Tim. I got some well, stuff to... Yeah, we'll get to it. I mean, yeah, yeah you want that, to talk about anything before we get to it? I got a lot of stuff. To, I got a lot of stuff to talk about. About Florida? Nah. I mean, I got <laughs> oh, some no. stuff about Florida. Before we get to Florida, I have folks. Okay. If you are a longtime SETI listener, you know that Tim and I recently had a bit of a, a personal watershed, a, a catharsis, if you will. We went Mm. in making fun of the films of Jack Weiss. Oh, Crypt of Dark Secrets. Updates. um, uh, Mardi Gras Massacre and Death Brings Roses. We came out the other side of this unintended trilogy as enormous Mm. fans. Wanting to hunt down his fourth. Well, his fourth film is on YouTube. We're we're a little afraid to touch it, but we will eventually. And his fifth (laughs) film, Storyville, currently lost. Yeah. Tim. What happened? what happened? I wrote to Severin Films. I saw that. Severin Films is a uh, a boutique Blu-ray and DVD company. They release and rescue and restore kind of obscure old movies. 
Um, they're shout pretty awesome. Hi, shout out to Severin. We love them. I'm going to read you the letter I wrote to Severin, everybody. Oh. And I'm going to read the response I got back. Oh, my God. I know. Tim, I'm you haven't excited. even heard this yet. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so excited. <clears throat> This is a, a letter addressed by me, your host, George O'Connor, to the Severin's Order Department, which seemed the best place to put this. Hi. I'm not sure if this is the correct email to send this to, but I figured I'd give it a shot. I'm a big fan of the films of Jack Weiss and have purchased Blu-rays of Mardi Gras Massacre and the double feature of Crypt of Dark Secrets and Death Brings Roses for you in the past. Information on Mr. Weiss and his films can be surprisingly hard to come by, but I am aware of two other films he directed, Storyville and Quadroon. Does Severn Films have any plans to release either of these films? Quadroon can currently be found on YouTube, but as best as I can tell, there doesn't seem to be any prints of Storyville floating around in the world. IMDB listed as presumed lost. I figured, given your relationship with Mr. Weiss, if anyone could rescue these movies from the abyss, it would be you. I know I would buy them. Winky smiley face emoji. <laughs> Looking forward to hearing from you, George O'Connor. Okay. And Tim, not more than two hours and change later, I received this momentous response from Severn Films. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm, hello. I'm ready. Says, hello. We <laughs> cannot comment on potential future releases here. Please keep an eye uh, on our website and socials for any updates. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey wrote you. <laughs> Jeffrey wrote me. <laughs> I assume he's Jeffrey Severin. I don't know anything else about him, but folks, there you hear it. Another, another step in our ongoing attempt. I mean, I have befriended Jack Weiss on LinkedIn. He's 90 something years old. I'm not sure if he's alive still. Um, we, we're, we're, tr I have, I have an eBay link looking for copies <laughs> of VHS of Storyville. I don't even have a VCR. No, but I want to get this. Neighbors movie. have one, and you and you you said you've you've actually broken into their house before while they're away. Yeah, I've used it. So yeah, you can just yeah just go just I go just in there and touch their stuff. Watch their old home films. <laughs> you go whoa, <laughs> this one's spicy. So that's pretty exciting. I thought. Well, it sounded very. Sounds like standing behind him was uh, someone from the Smithsonian. Telling him to say that. Oh, I bet you are <laughs> right. I bet you, as you know, folks, the Smithsonian, they have thwarted many of our attempts to, uh, you know, get the word out there about giant <clears throat> horned hominids and stuff. They've actually come into this episode, into this very recording studio and stolen portions of our episodes because we've revealed truths too big for their <laughs> telling. And now they don't That's... want Storyville by the by the possibly late, hopefully not great Jack Weiss to be out yeah. there. Who knows what's in that movie? Who... We don't know. Man, it's lost. I bet you. Why? Why would stories, it be lost? Vils, Mickey Rooney's son Tim. Yeah, there's sneak secrets yeah. in that movie. We do know it's well, about it's prostitution exciting. because it is Jack Weiss. So yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> We love Jack. I, I should say up front, we both love movies. I hope, I hope <laughs> this, people know we yeah. laugh with them. There's, there's, a, there's a line. Uh, don't let me forget. Well, let me say it. I'll forget. Yeah. There's a line between people that just I want to make money, get this crap out there and put it on double feature, these old movies yeah. you watch. And then sometimes I think somebody was like, I'm going to try to make a movie. And we'll get to it. But tonight's movie, I think maybe he was trying to make a movie because that, that movie could have easily been filled with topless ladies. Uh, artist colony. It's like, you know, there is a, a cut that is, ah, uh, I'm going to talk about this. I, <laughs> okay. I did some research on this one. Um, let's talk about Florida and get to it. If we right, got facts. So yes, facts? this representation of Florida, I got, I got, I mean, you got a list, I'm sure. Tim, go for the list. No list. It's just, I have some facts about Florida. It's a state. Let's hear them. The governor it wears state. big white boots to make sure people know that black boots never existed. You know, <laughs> zing. <laughs> Florida is where NASA launches rockets into space, so that eventually mm -hmm. people can maybe escape Florida. They're always testing out these rockets. Nice, nice. Uh, again, the Florida flag is like the Alabama flag. It's a big red X that just took off the Confederate stuff, and it's got the emblem in the middle. That's not a joke. I you just know, saw that. I, I was about to say, I don't think that's even a joke. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Way to go, Florida. You really, you're great. You're good. Capital is Tallahassee. Uh, the state bird is the mockingbird, as people uh -huh. like to mock Florida. 
That's why it's the Mockingbird. Wah, wah. That might be true. That might be <laughs> so, true. That's it. That's my facts. That's your facts? <laughs> that's my facts. I have, a, I have a few more facts to add to that, Tim. I wasn't going to honor them with real facts. <laughs> Wait, is, but is is the state bird actually a mockingbird? It's probably yeah, a flamingo, it right? Oh, no, it is. Okay, okay. They probably have like a state. We're like we have a state crocodilian too, because we got alligators. Uh, anyway. We have listeners, and we want to say we love our friends down there. Uh, yeah. There's nice people there. It's just the government. There, sure, there is. Yeah, I have a lot of family there, for instance. So. Um. So, uh, long-time listeners will know that for a long time on SETI BIMCO, it was kind of a hallmark of Tim, who has, I think it's safe to say, an elevator <laughs> obsession. He would bandy about this fact that there were no elevators in the state of Florida before, what was it, 1970 you would lie? Yeah. That was your line? <laughs> That's yeah. not lie. And uh, <laughs> then... I discovered the uh, extent of Tim's lies recently because my sister, one of my aforementioned relatives in Florida, is getting married there in a couple months. And she's getting married in a place called Citrusville. And I was like, let me see what's going on in Citrusville. And in Citrusville, <laughs> I discovered there was an elevator that has been installed since, what was it, 1950 or something? Ah, I don't know. That sounds ah, like- it's long. It's, you know what? It was before <laughs> 1970. And Tim, today, I have gone further into your nest of lies. <sighs> and from... Where is it? Oh, from the website History Blog. In there was an article I found. Here's the name of the article. Are you ready for this headline? It's going to tell you a whole story in itself. <laughs> 1890s elevator found in historic Florida hotel. Well, now you could be lying. Nope, because you could look this up. Listeners at home, turn off our podcast. Actually, <laughs> just delete the podcast. We're a podcast <laughs> of lies. Thanks to my co-host Tim. <laughs> So in St. Petersburg, Florida, there is an historic hotel called the Detroit Hotel. Don't know why it's called the Detroit Hotel. <laughs> but under recent renovations, in order to transform why, this event, because they don't want to be in Florida. Yeah, it's like a hopeful place to go. Like someday <laughs> we'll go to Detroit. Some, we'll get out someday, of here. Someday. We'll get out of fucking St. Petersburg. This place actually sounds cool, though. They're renovating the uh, lobby of this uh, abandoned hotel. And they did all these renovations. They found this uh, old um, elevator, and they're turning it into a steampunk bar. Mm. So if you are a steam, if you like steam what? and whistles and goggles, you Wait. should go down to St. Petersburg. Yeah, is, is this like the steam room scene in the Marx Brothers movie? I mean, like it's an, a small elevator. That's the club. No, no, it's just they're they're. No, I first off, thank you for having a reference that's easily 120 years old that okay. everyone will get. The end uh, of Girls Just Wanna Have Fun by Cindy Lauper. They all oh. walk into a little room. <laughs> just what? squished in there. There. God update. damn it. Update yeah, the that's reference. what I'm doing. Wow, folks, Tim. <laughs> um, no, no, it's it's the entire first floor of this place, this lobby. And they were knocking out all the renovations that have been made there. They found the old switchboard. Ooh. Uh yeah, um, other things they found in the tombed, entombed body of Ron DeSantis's grandmother, <laughs> Come on. still wearing her white boots. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and addressing another one of your obsessions, Tim. <laughs> Jeez. Um, <clears throat> don't you jeez me? <laughs> in Tampa, Florida, in 1885, was the first streetcar in Florida. You told me this last week, I think. I or told you, you about did... a different place. I ever, Tim. Oh, I think every you told week, about it on the show. Every week, I'm going to tell you about the first streetcar in this particular town. 1885, it was a wood-burning steam car, and Ooh. it was replaced a few years later in 1893 by an electric one. Oh, they skipped uh, the, the horse part. I guess, uh, mm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> and maybe those aren't called streetcars. <laughs> but this tiny that's club. My Flor- okay. That's my Florida facts. Yeah, it's my not reference. just in the this, elevator. It's just not tiny in the elevator. Club. Is it like small, <laughs> like when all the characters of Star Wars fell into the garbage chute and it was closing in on them? <laughs> yeah. And just that's like- the funny thing is you go, you go in this club and you have a little communication device and you have to yell to people outside the club <laughs> to let you out. And they'll yes. hear you cheering and having a good time and they think you're dying. <laughs> yeah. And Good then one. you get attacked by a one-armed monster. No, a one-eyed monster. <laughs> right. <laughs> Trying to update <sighs> my reference so everybody will understand. It's good. Yeah. I mean, you're get we're up to 1977 Star Wars, <laughs> so you are you're really moving up in the world. Oh, and before I forget, we are also <laughs> Fr- France. We have a big audience in France. That's our France is our biggest audience outside the United States. So I I think we're the Jerry Lewis of podcasts. Oh. 
I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> what did he do? Something <laughs> bad that I don't know about? Yeah, it, yeah, he did the uh, that whole oh, like, Holocaust that movie. movie. Yeah, but he didn't molest child children. Child, I, I assume he see. did. Child, that's what you have to worry about. You mention someone, they're like, oh, all right. I like it. He did. Okay, was that it? That was the whole bit. Yeah, where the Jerry Lewis. You know, do you know French? Culture loves Jerry Lewis more than we do. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that was something they talked about in the 70s. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and the French, they hate Star Wars much more mm, than the Americans. Probably. All right. This movie. We owe a lot to the French, though. I mean, not we, only big listeners, you know. Yeah. We need a segue. Speaking of France. Speaking of France. Let's talk Florida. about a place that no French person would go. <laughs> <laughs> Florida. There's a, a couple having a honeymoon. Now, last week you said Erwin Mayer's directing this. Ooh, did you think it was the disaster guy? Uh, who, I thought this it was a different guy, yeah. Oh. The nobody well, if in this you go movie to his, is anybody. Yeah, if you go to his IMDb, there's a lot of uh, confusion over this person. Yeah, I thought so, so too. So the movie, again, just to recap, it's called Hollywood. No. Oh. <laughs> honeymoon. Honeymoon of Horror. <laughs> Um, Erwin Meyer, Florida. but not the Erwin Meyer, just another Erwin <laughs> Meyer. It was filmed in Coconut Grove, Miami in mm. what, 1964, I think? Yep. One year after Kennedy was just gone down. One year. <laughs> I, I like to add history. You just laugh. I'd love to add history. Why, do you, why are you writing on a piece of paper every time I say something? <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason, Tim. <laughs> I'm definitely not doing a secret project. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> so you were excited also i was like oh my god somebody named snuffy miller's in this movie <laughs> oh, I wrote that too. okay here's my notes right i write i write the first thing i wrote uh oh i'm on the wrong page uh <laughs> opens with silly footage of woman in polka dot dress running down highway to silly music yes. and then i actually walked away that day that was the end of what i watched Walked away. I literally was like, I, I'm like, I. It was such a Tim Hamilton movie. I'm like, I don't have the strength to watch this today. Oh no! And I left it there, and I left. I went, to, I went and left to come back to another day. And then Where'd I came go? back. I, I just left my room, and then I went on. Like I did a couple of. I went to Boston. I went okay. way away. Yeah, I was like, I'm not doing this movie. <laughs> And I also was – I was thinking maybe I'd watch it on the Amtrak, but I have learned not to watch a Tim Hamilton movie on an Amtrak because yeah. of the probability of nudie cutie. Yeah. Oh, I, it reminded me to talk about that. So then I, when I come back to the movie two days later, uh, we cut, it cuts from this night scene of this goofy footage of a woman running down the highway to the same woman in a different dress uh, in a red sports car driving down a Floridian road. It's mm-hmm. still the most Tim Hamilton movie I've ever seen. <laughs> So I wanted so, to talk real quick. You you were saying up front how you were surprised this movie wasn't full of nudity. Yeah, I thought pr- so pretty there obvious is an, opportunity. Yeah, there's an alternate cut of this thing, which is kind of lost. But people, uh-huh. There's whole web boards of people trying to find wow. it where it's called – I didn't write it down. It's something like the Orgy of Golden Nudes. <laughs> now you go. And if you look at – if you look at IMDb, there's literally actors, like actresses listed, and it just says nude inserts. Because oh. apparently it's like the way with like Caligula, like they filmed like a real movie and then like uh, Tinto Brass filmed like a bunch of women like, you know, just like running around naked yeah. and they inserted that in between scenes. Right, right. Apparently there was about six minutes of just random toplessness at the super, at the big party scene. That, that's, yeah, that's similar. Yeah. Yeah, someone did and that. It's funny because someone did that. With what? I'll just help you out. Someone did that with the oh. Zapruder film. You know, like, there's a, there's a, also a cut where they just insert nude ladies running around. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. And this guy looks a little bit like Bruce Campbell in some angles, didn't you think? Camp Bell. Camp. Wait, the guy, the guy Campbell. with the mustache, the main character. Yeah. Looks like Bruce Campbell of Evil Dead fame. Yeah, from the side sometimes. I thought I thought you would agree. Huh. I mean, he was Here's the thing. He actually had what I would consider some movie star looks and charisma. Yeah. And it w- it was funny to see him in this movie filled of people who didn't. 
Yeah, Cause I'm like, this true. guy could have been like, a, like if I didn't know that any better, I'd be like, this guy was probably a real movie star. What was his name? Emil. Emil. Yeah. So we drive yeah. to this house. The woman is Lily and the man is Emil. And they both got Emil. married because she has a <laughs> uh, interior dialogue about, I just met this oh. man. We'd just been married and Emil was so sweet and formal. Even in my dreams, I hadn't dreamt of it as wonderful as this. For me, it was a stairway to heaven. And Emil's eyes were filled with stars. And I, I forget what she said there. There's later stuff that's more amusing. but uh, Yeah, this movie put me very strongly in the memory of previous Eddie Bimco film. What is it? The Monster of Camp Sunshine? Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, that was also a regional film, though that was a New York one. And there's this period of time, like in the dead, the sixties were a, a bad time for films, regional films <laughs> where they kind it's like, you could see that this was a, I would say that the filmmaker, probably a cool guy, mm-hmm. Erwin Meyer, who knew a lot of cool people living in Miami and they were a bunch of wackos are like, Hey, I have access to this mansion for a weekend. Let's all the wackos come down and we're going to film a crazy murder mystery thing. Right. And it's not going to make any sense. So we'll try to cover it up <laughs> with uh, with like really bad narration that comes and goes at points. It was exactly like Monster of Camp Sunshine in that way, yeah. although with less nudity. Right. Yeah, they just got married, come to this house. We never see the outside. They come home at night. I never saw the outside <laughs> this house. For, no, <laughs> we? We, we, there are, there's a few <laughs> scenes outside the house, like when she's running through the woods and falls down and is knocked unconscious. <laughs> yes, but no house. <laughs> but that's, yeah. <laughs> But Folks, uh, they, this movie. <laughs> they go in the door, and uh, yeah, she, she already told us in her interior dialogue that they got married. And he they've carried, only known each other for two weeks, which is important yeah. to know. They, uh, he carries her across the threshold, yeah, up the stairs. <laughs> yep. Sorry to laugh. This house, the interior of this house, is crazy. And I don't well, I, I don't think the interior it. honestly makes sense either, because I think they were filming in a weird way and different houses, like, maybe. Yeah, and it's very – even though this is a 1964 movie, this looks like very 70s leisure lounge to me. Yeah, yeah. A lot of conversation pits and shag carpety type things. Yep. So in their wedding bed is a man with a knife in his chest. <laughs> no, not just a man. A little person. Oh, a little person. That's <laughs> we right. We walk in. There's a little person there wearing polka dot pants with a knife <laughs> in his chest, and they scream, ah! I'm like, whoa, wait, what? <laughs> So he, I felt bad for him. He's in the whole movie. Obviously the actor, the director said, go act goofy, go act, you know, go act like a, a doofus, the, the little person. Every time yeah. he shows up, he's just telling bad jokes. Yeah, He's kind of, he's like, like he's doing tell. like wacky. He's like, yeah, he's very much a Tim Hamilton. He's very <laughs> high jinx. He's like, Hey, 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 um, honestly, he has the most personality of any character in the movie. True. True. And, uh, he's got a pretty wicked soul patch. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. He, um, <laughs> I heard him described, which is not kind, Uh-oh. but I heard him described as a seeing eye dwarf for the oh. giant ball, blind sculptor. Who said that? Who, Kablasto? A website I went to. Oh. Yeah, let's that, say it was Kablasto. Kablasto was on. <laughs> Kablasto on here. <laughs> you make it a, a bingo card. Uh, all right, Tim, I'm actually going to tell you. Oh, no. Stop all progress. <clears throat> Stop all progress. Folks. If you listen to this show, you know that Tim has a predilection for repeating certain themes. Yeah. And uh, I actually, I have created the world's first <laughs> SETI bingo card. Oh, no. Bingo. And uh, I, it actually, you hit bingo so quick, I was waiting to do it. <laughs> Can I tell you what you got the bingo on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And it was, it's a little bit of a cheat too. Cause there was one that was a split thing. And one of them I kind of led you into the first one was elevators. Eh, yeah, I talked about, you elevators. led me into that. Second was a Smithsonian reference. <laughs> Third was the Pruder reference. That's easy. The fourth one, which is the one I was kind of like Tim garbles, the title <laughs> slash dead, dead hippies. <laughs> Did I say that? What? I said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, when? you did do Dead Hippies. You 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 messed up the title the first time you said it. Jeez. Oh, and then <laughs> the last one in the bingo, in the bing co, was uh, a longing reference for Jack Weiss. A longing now, reference? I, yeah, a we long- were like, oh, Jack Weiss, we oh, miss yeah, yeah. you. It had to be a nice thing we said. You let that. Now, do you want to hear the rest of these? No, keep playing. Save it for the okay. end of the show. All right. People will stay. That's, you got a bingo already. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that didn't even count what I started off as the free star. We'll have to make a bingo game. Yep. Folks, if you're listening at home, feel free to use this as your own. Okay. Oh, where were we? Oh, so oh, everybody yes. jumps up and they're like, surprise, we knew you got married because we had someone follow you. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Remember? So he had, what does he say? He goes, uh, welcome, honey, to all my, oh, Luce, Lily, these, because he's got a French accent, so I wrote a French accent. Uh oh. Lily, these are my lunatic friends. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she's, she's just standing there, yeah. And one, one terrible Like, can friend. you imagine? Like, you literally just got married to this guy. He apparently swept you <laughs> off your feet. You've known him for two weeks. Mm-hmm. He carries you back to his weird mansion, which you can't even see the outside of for the first time. <laughs> carries you into the, <laughs> into the wedding bed where he's going to make <laughs> sweet, sweet love to you. There's a dead little person in there <laughs> who springs up yelling surprise. And then, like, seven or eight other weirdos <laughs> hop out of different corners. Like, what the fuck? That's instant annulment. And... One of the first people uh-huh. she meet is a man called Saki Van Bridge. He's a blind sculptor, and all he does is touch her everywhere. Beautiful. Bone structure is very good. The nose is perfect. Mm, nice bone structure. Ooh, very he, pretty. I approve. He, Ooh. he full up <laughs> feels up her face. <laughs> Like it's like if I Tim, I have to do it. It's and an embarrassing neck. comics reference. He's Alicia Masters from the Fantastic Four. <laughs> yes, he is. Oh my god! Yeah, he's a blind sculptor who, like Alicia Masters, if you don't know, in the Fantastic Four was the blind girlfriend of the Thing, mm-hmm. and she loved his soul. And she would be this great sculptor, the superhero. She would invite them into her studio, mm-hmm. touch them all over their naked bodies, <laughs> and do these amazing sculptures of them. And this guy's yes. the same. He's like, you look so beautiful. And he's saying this weird thing like, I'll be like your dad and you're my daughter. Oh, yeah. I can't, was, it was – I. <laughs> yeah. Saki Van Bridge. We're almost up to the point where I basically st- – Saki Van Bridge. <laughs> That's his name. I love that name, Saki Van Bridge. <laughs> yeah. I wrote Big Beardo Feels Up Her Face. So a, big, right. a big party happens and Lily's, uh, Lily's like – I think everyone's staring at me. These people are odd. I don't know these people. Why can't I talk? <laughs> I know. Because they're all fucking lunatics. There's oh. a belly dancer who kind of sucks. <laughs> she does. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> like she was a real belly dancer. <laughs> this, uh, the scene, I must say, or you'll make me forget. The scene uh-huh. of the party is much like the Charlie Brown Christmas where they're all jamming out to... <laughs> <laughs> Vince Garaldi. <laughs> That's the scene. It's just yeah, them. The scene where it's all the people, all the weird little characters dancing. <laughs> yes. I wrote something very similar. I wrote um this overhead shots of the potty of the party with all the hepcat weirdos doing their own thing in their own little corners. This is how I pictured Tim's subconscious to work. <laughs> I felt like yeah. this was like a filmed version of your brain. <laughs> True. Just <laughs> and like there's a guy a shirtless guy Except, playing bongos and like a making out couple she keeps putting her foot on a guy who's so licking your foot yeah there's a lady crying i don't know there's, there's, there was a, why why do we have to see that and the little person was dancing in front of her that's why she was crying he was doing that's what he was doing <laughs> that's what i saw i wrote something the little person is doing something something a gold-plated woman i don't know uh, yeah oh, he reveals a gold-plated woman there's a woman I got their names. I don't think we're going to be able to explain. We're not going to be able to explain what this movie's about. Well, a lady walks up to Lily, the new wife. And she's like, mm-hmm. I guess you're from Idaho. And she's like, no, Kansas. And she's like, oh. And she, she's just a very, very, like, doesn't like her around, is, obviously. All the women is that don't the, like. Yeah. There's two well, of them. Because the guy, Emil is super good looking. Yeah. I, I will say Emil's a lot better looking than Lily. He could have done better. There's the blonde lady who's his ex, who's a recurring character. That's, Was that her? That's Myra. Myra comes later. Myra. Every, and then there's a, his... Yeah. She's like, I told his him. His agent. Oh, that she's later. Some woman. We never saw her except at the end. The I think she was at the beginning. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. He's an artist. The, if I, yeah. People, they're all artists. They're this all is a wacky conclave wacky of artists. artists. Yeah. <laughs> wacky. <laughs> It's just like, Tim, it's like when we have a party. It's just like that. Yes. It is just yep. like this. You're it's... the guy licking people's feet. <laughs> I'm the little person who's getting stabbed. It's just like this. And he gets a present. It's a little golden sculpture of a girl. Oh, oh it, no, it's a woman. That's sorry. It's a woman yeah. with gold paint, which we know it is. Yeah. I think we're supposed to be surprised she dances. At, oh, you're a real yeah, woman. Yeah, it's pretty obviously yeah. <laughs> a woman. <laughs> and it's because he makes statues... 
of, of, of ladies. Gold women. And I thought it was going to be a thing where it's like, oh, he's a murderer and he gold plates women like they've done in the That's movies. What I thought but no, too. he makes he makes very small statues. They're only like two feet tall. I, they didn't have the budget, I'm thinking. I I suspect that is the case. Well, how much budget would it have been just to paint a lady and just have her sit still and be yeah. like, oh, she's a statue? <laughs> they already had a lady do it once. She moved, though, and she started dancing or yep. something. Yeah. So everybody's dancing. Uh, I got all that. Everyone passes out. Yeah. And when his brother, it's his brother that's, um, what's his name? Uh, Jeff Goldblum Light. I don't know. He yeah. looks kind of like Jeff Goldblum to me. He's he's out in the garage his, singing. His brother, Tura, Lura, whose brother, Lura. <laughs> yeah, who hilariously does not have a French accent, because <laughs> the actor is like the main actor is very French. Yes, and the and he's like, ah, oh, he's my brother. Uh, we but he was born here, so he has no accent. Like good, good cover movie. <laughs> yeah, they all they all pass out, and our couple is in bed in the morning with jazz playing. No, it's not the couple. It's only her. Uh, I thought. Let's see. Because he's left already. She gets up. She's like, oh, Emil. No, they do have a little Emil? talk in bed before they fall asleep. Do they? Because she, because oh, Lily says, why do I stare? It's because I'm a simple thing. You don't remember her saying stupid stuff like that? I, I don't know. <laughs> this movie was really hard to take notes to. You know. But then, like, again, I, I'm, then we're pretty close to where I gave up on notes, actually. We're only in. He tells her everyone has a key to his house. That's that kind of place. Oh, that's a key you didn't hear piece that? of information. Yeah. No, no. She falls asleep, wakes up in the morning. Because the phone He's rang. not there. The phone woke her up. Because the phone rang. And nobody there. She answers there. the phone. She's like, hello? 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 And they hang up. And apparently, I mean, that happens to me a lot. I mean, I, I basically, I have like two people in my life who call me on my phone still. Oh, a landline? And it's not... We- what? Oh, a landline? No, I don't have a landline. I haven't had a landline in like 30 years, I feel oh, like. Okay. Or maybe not that, like 20 years. But like, like I never speak on the phone to like anybody, but it's not like the weirdest thing in the world if I just get a hang up, but she's like, this unnerves her. Yeah. And she goes running out into the hallway and she runs smack into a white guy in brown face. Oh, I was going to say, ooh. Oh. His name is Hodge. Hat- Hajmir. 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 Uh, yeah. I said, and meets Hajmir, maybe, and and uh, Brownface? Yeah. That's oh, definitely note. in Brown. Yeah. At first, honestly, for the first second, I wasn't sure, and I had to go back and, like, oh, this is. And he's speaking in a, what, a, a 1964 white guy probably thinks an Indian guy sounds like. Yep. And Hajmir calls him Yale Master, <laughs> and he's very weird. He apparently spends all night standing in the hallway. Yeah. And uh, he says, you can't go see him while he's working. He must not be disturbed. And she says, well, who are you? And you know what he says? What's he say? Remember? He says, I I have many names. Yes, he does. Oh, you have the names. (laughs) Yes. All right, let's hear him. (laughs) Why does he have many names? Well, he's in Florida and he talks Uh funny and he worships Vishnu. So the Secret Surface has code names for him. And these are a few. Here's three of them. You Ready? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm, oh, I'm ready, Tim. I'm writing yeah. this down. His first code name was Pete Bestman. <laughs> and then they changed his name to uh, Zapruder Joe. Zapru- oh, second Zapruder reference of <laughs> yeah, the day. Sorry. All right. And then lastly, they, his, uh, his code name was Prince Adam. He-Man? Yeah. No, Prince Adam. Are you playing? Are you, yeah, you, that's He-Man's <laughs> true identity. Are you, are you just trying to butter me up or something? <laughs> It's weird. What are you going to give me? Come on. I don't know. I'm confused by this. <laughs> well, she wants to go where Emil is. And, you know, Hodge is like, he must not be disturbed. I must. While he's st- working, you must never disturb him. Oh, wait, but I'm not going to do his. Vo- That's not no, his voice. I no. want to. Sp- it was worse. It was way worse, everybody. Yeah. It was like that guy on The Simpsons. It was terrible. What kind of Simpsons? <laughs> Mr. Burns? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Burns. Yeah. Chief Wiggum. Yeah. Those guys are terrible. Terrible. <laughs> uh, so he he must stay there and watch her sleep, which is what he does, right? He's <laughs> he later he's like there and he's just watching her sleep. He's always Honestly, there. There was there was a really weird scene here where like I felt like there was actually scenes assembled out of order because like she sees him in the hallway. She's like, "Are you always here?" And he's like, "Yes." You can't <laughs> yes. see him. And then like it repeated. It was like the same. She, yeah. Like she ran in again and fell down. Oh, it and, was like, a very bad shot. Thi- Remember the door opened on the cabinet and one of the master's knives for sculpting was in there. Oh, the yes. Hole. And they're like, it's, it's they're shown like, very bad. Why did you? Yeah. And she's like freaked out. She's like, why was there a knife put there? And he's like, and Haj, uh, what's his name? Hajmir is like, 
I assume one of the guests did it last night. Yes, the joke. Although it seems a bit much. <laughs> so he also of, says this all the time. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. It doesn't. And, and uh, it, it, in pure uh, Florida fashion, when they go out to the pool, uh, he's telling uh-huh. Lily about Hajj. He's like, oh, he's OK. You know, he once murdered someone, but it's OK. People overdo that to <laughs> pass the time of day. Yeah. Where did you meet him? He was he had escaped from jail. What was he jail for? He killed someone. Yeah. And she's like, you don't think maybe he really killed? He's like, yeah, maybe. Oh. But he's like, people over there, over there they do that. Yeah. yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> and then the little person runs by, tells a joke, jumps in the pool. And <laughs> Drowns. Yeah. yeah, he just, the rest of the movie, you can just see him in the background hanging. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You're just trying to get me to say Wizard of Oz. Come on. No, that's actually cheat. not on the list. It's not on the list. So while they're eating breakfast, the car pulls up with Helene. Oh, Helene is his ex-girl. Like Helene screens. is the blonde woman who uh, shows animosity towards her at the party the night before. Helene is um, odd looking. Yeah. She shows up yeah. and they give her a lot of air, a lot of film time walking all the way up to the breakfast table. Yep. She and she shows drink. up and this is... This kind is, of graphically yeah. has been beaten up. Yeah. Not, like not, she has not like, good makeup, but yeah, she's supposed to have a black eye and everything. She has a black eye and she has like um, like marks on her neck where somebody tried to throttle her. Like her hair, like she has like, it's 1964, so her hair is like a shellacked yeah. beehive monstrosity. He's like, it's uh, all kind of pulled to skew. It was honestly pretty disturbing. Yeah. Because like, like, I'm like, yeah, uh. But he does say, we must take you to the hospital. Whatever. She's, she's like, oh, <laughs> I'll, sl- I'll sleep it off. I'm like, oh. I'll sleep it off. Uh, Later on, she refers to that person who did it to her. Uh, he was just a minor sex maniac, not a murderer. Wow. <laughs> when she's talking he's, to the cops about him. He's wacky like, artists. Oh, a minor, no minor sex <laughs> maniac. That's fine. <laughs> but she's always trying to kiss Emil. She wants him back. They're showing yeah, she that. was the ex of Emil. And she's like, you'll be tired of her soon. I don't know. I'm giving her a French accent. <laughs> You'd be tired of this new girl soon enough. You, what we have hasn't died. And he's like, no, I must leave you in the past. I worry <laughs> about you, but like, you know, because he's a good guy. Yeah. Or is he? Because here's the part where they because? introduce the plot. There's, there's suddenly uh-huh. a detective there. And they're looking yeah, at I a picture. Yeah, I didn't understand this at all. Yeah. They're looking at a picture of a lady named Narissa. And it's confusing. But Who was at the party? No, no. She's the woman that Emil painted before. And she disappeared. And that's why the people at the party are like, oh, she disappeared. I uh, so glad he met was someone else. Was she the lady in gold? No, we never met her. We never met. Okay, he already, I, was confused I think he that. already made a sculpture and she was missing. That's why he ran on. Like we're supposed to think he went and got a new wife. Mm. So they see a picture of Narissa, and they're like, "Yep, she's in Mexico." Call the parents. Tell them we found her. She's in Mexico. We see a picture of her. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if you remember what was going on. They're trying to tell the parents that she's alive. I remember all this, and it honestly didn't make sense until you're saying it now. Because then later, it's hard. The same cop shows up later, and he's like, "Oh, it turns out that uh, wasn't her." Yeah, I know. So yeah, she's still missing. I'm like, what? (laughs) What is going? And it's again because this movie will not show the outside of the house. (laughs) No, it's customary when you're doing a scene like this. You have an establishing (laughs) shot. Maybe you show the cop car pulling up. Mm -hmm. Maybe you show just the outside of the house for a second as he's at the door. It's like we just went from a scene where all this shit is happening with Hodge and everybody <laughs> to like just all of a sudden the cop is in the house. And Dick. And he's talking. Is that when he's talking about like circle art too? Wait, we'll get to that. But he he's. Okay. He threatens a meal. He says, I know your brother was hospitalized for brain damage and he's not better. <laughs> <laughs> I you know lied to the, the doctor. <laughs> I know. So we're getting this idea that Emil's brother is like a dangerous person. And well, uh, I mean. Tim, I did such a bad job taking notes in this. Is this yet when Emil goes like, my brother and I, his brother, who looks like Jeff Goldblum kind of, goes to (laughs) Lily like, my brother and I are so close. I feel like you and I are together. Like, you're my property. Yeah. And then remember he kind of hits on her and then he like falls down again? Because apparently that's his move. He gets kind of like too pushy and then just collapses on himself. Are you talking about when the brother hits on Lily? Yep. Oh, Does that happen yet or does it happen later? Oh, uh. The the phone rings again and there's no one there, nobody there, isn't it? Yeah, and Hodge is there watching her answer the phone. It's all this kind of stuff. Oh, I do want to say something. When the blonde lady, what's her name? Uh, Helene. Helene, when he is show, he's all worried about the hospital. This is actually going to tie into my story. 
She's like, she's like, no, I'll just go sleep it off. I'm going to sit at home. Like in front of Helene uh, and Lily, she says this. I'm going to go home and moon over you and maybe swallow a couple of silver bullets. I didn't hear that. Yeah, just casually talking about shooting yourself. Are you making this up? Like, I well, missed that. No, I'm being – no. I was I was like – I actually – I was pretty excited at that point. And that's <laughs> – wow. That's about when my notes really – I just start writing random quotes. And that's why I don't know the order of stuff anymore. Well, then Emil's brother does find Lily home alone and he does this whole talk and he's like touching yep. her and, and – uh, You're my property. He's like, I like you. He says, uh-uh. yeah. But but then – She he, runs out then, of the house. Well, no, he – but isn't he like coy? Is he, is he like, oh, no, don't make don't, – don't make anything of this. He goes, I, there's a lot of things you don't know about me, things you wouldn't understand. Yeah. Things you couldn't yeah. understand. Things you shouldn't understand. <laughs> I'm a lone wolf, well, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. Wow. <laughs> Another Pee Wee Herman reference. Is Pee Wee going to be... Do I have to add Pee Wee to the SETI bingo oh, card? I don't want to. I don't want to get sued. Okay. That's his That's his thing. Yeah, well... Yeah, she does run through the woods. Pee-wee-herman. She runs through the woods. I forget why. We don't see her leave the house. She's just <laughs> running in the woods. Falls over. <laughs> runs into... Is knocked her. unconscious. Oh, yeah. Wakes up with the big beardo, the, bu- the Saki, blind sculptor. Saki Van Bridge, come on. How can you forget Saki that Saki Van Bridge is rubbing her face going, are nice you okay? Brunch. Are you okay? It's like, no, this is big, meaty. Pu-. He's mm-hmm. a big dude. Yeah. Big, meaty. Pu-. And the way they show he's blind is they put like charcoal around his eyes. Oh, uh, yeah. So he had, like bags under his eyes. Just like that. Yeah. And he's just rubbing his hands over her face like, oh, wake up, lady, wake up. He does a long talk about the circle of life, touching weaves. Yep. Yeah. And uh, his, his sense, of, sense of touch is miraculous. Yeah, he talks about like the veins in the leaf I can make into a mountain. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening. This and he wants the sculptor. He's like, come home with me. Yes. And she's like, no, nah, it's getting late. He's like, oh, no, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's very nonchalant about the fact she was laying unconscious in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Also, there's, there's, there's a blind man out in the woods. <laughs> We're not given any sense of how far this is from the house. No, this we don't is far. There could be like alligators there. There's pretend yeah. houses everywhere. So <clears throat> the phone rings again. Nobody's there. Is nobody a character from uh, Family Circus, or is it? I don't know. Nobody. But a, car- for people who don't know Family Circus, like often you'd find the kids they they had murdered the goldfish or something, and the mom's like, "Who did this?" And they're like, "I don't know." Isn't that is it, or is it nobody? There's a dotted figure they draw in the background, like this is nobody. This imaginary. Person. Wait, is this really a thing? You've never even read this Family Circus at all? No. Nah. Uh, I can't remember if it's nobody or I don't know. Wait, all right, I have questions. So, all right, Family Circus is a famous one-panel gag strip about mm-hmm. like these fucking little cherub face kids. And Who does that? That's not Bill, Bill Keen, Keen, is it? Well, his son took and over. Bill Keen. His son, of course, took his over. son took over. The, the good comic strips die. Bad ones continue on forever as family affairs. <laughs> okay. um, is there literally a recurring character that is like a weird ghost? Yeah, it's like nobody. You know, when a kid says, I don't know, I think it's I don't know, not nobody. That's a big joke oh in there. When, the, yeah, those But are I like the idea that that's like maybe a sibling of hers that like passed away. No. Because I'm typing family circus nobody. Oh. <gasps> oh is it God, nobody? There is. Oh, good. It is nobody. Okay. Yeah, like a nobody. He's like a weird little. No, it's not me. Oh, not me. Okay. Cross out. Oh, have... no, I'm sorry. It's. Tim, it's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, There's nobody, no. not me, and I don't know. <laughs> and they're little, like, weird, like, ghosts. Casper the Friendly Ghost-looking ghosts. <clears throat> oh, my God. This family has seen such tragedy. <laughs> They've lost three members of the family. That's not what it means. Nobody has a mustache. That's who they blame it on when they murder a goldfish or a gerbil. Or when they murder I don't know. <laughs> it starts out as just one and then there's more. All wow. right. I am glad that we have moved on in our comic strip appreciations to okay. other yeah. long running bad comic strips. So the detective's back. Because we're gonna end this yep. thing. Because I love a great this line talk. here. Yeah. Oh, you tell me he's lying, but the, the basis is he came to tell them that he's figured out insane people uh draw circles and are obsessed with circles. <laughs> he's cracked yeah. the case. <laughs> His line about this is art is often only a manifestation of, as you know, art is only often only a manifestation of insanity. I'm like, well, I'm writing that one down. <laughs> and circle. Oh, George, who draws circles? Every Family time. Circle Bill Keen. Every time Bill Keen draws a cartoon, it's in a circular panel for people who don't oh know. Oh, my God. 
Circles. <laughs> Circles. Oh. I'm being handed oh, a piece what? of paper from from, oh, from producer Miss Lee. From producer Lee. Miss Lee. Wait. What is this? Okay. Oh, George, what, 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 what you, you wrote a list. Nope. I, I yeah. wrote a list. <laughs> you sent it to me? <laughs> what? It's this whole thing about circles. You're set, you wrote a list of the three things a person would actually be obsessed with, not circles. Mm. An insane okay, person wow. would actually be obsessed with. I'm, thanks for writing I'm this, I'm going to guess this was my alternate personality <laughs> side that I don't remember, my artistic side, so to speak. <laughs> Yeah, three, so all right, three let's hear this list, Tim. An insane right. person would actually be obsessed with. Number one, okay. Pete Best. Yeah, Lockhorns. Pete Best. Pete Best, all right. Yep, well, second Number Pete two, Best reference to the evening, folks. Yeah. Sapruder films? Yep, so well, third, third <laughs> Sapruder. All right, nice. All right. Third, a person uh, living with three to five cats, you know, because hey. they're, they're <laughs> infected with toxoplasmosis. I like That's that you're George. not entirely That's George. sure. <laughs> you're not entirely sure how many cats I have. You're like, uh, maybe a couple ran away. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're all good. Good. Hope they're it's all good. okay. Thanks for that list, George. Yep. Thanks. I, I'm glad I don't I'm glad I wrote it. Don't even remember writing it. It it's the toxoplasmosis. Yes, it is. It, it, they they the worms in my brain take over and make me write fun quote unquote <laughs> funny lists. <gasps> you know who else liked to draw circles? I just realized. Uh Bill Keen. Hitler. He said that right. He drew a circle around <laughs> Poland on his map and France. Oh fuck. <laughs> You did not just go there. <laughs> why did you get your list this, done? <laughs> Tim, no, this is why This is why I can't, when I'm on other podcasts, this is why I can't mention Seti Bimko. I'm making fun of Hitler. <laughs> 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 He's the one that came up with the concept of the family circus, and he uh, draws circles. Sorry, that's French. Why is he, fr- why, the yeah, why is he French? The family circus. I don't know. That's uh, your <laughs> terrible German accent. My gut. So, so he does this whole thing, yeah. Uh, I just realized that's a new uh, that's a new accent for you, Tim. You, your your list of uh, impersonations has grown by one. <laughs> Let's hope that character never returns. <laughs> yes. So the detective leaves, and he's like, "I'm not accusing anyone, but but uh, watch." What's he say? He's like, "Be careful when you're asleep." He's, a, he's like, "Sleep with one eye open." Yeah, Whatever. Watch the sky. Watch and then the he skies. flies off in a UFO. <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> Oh, watch the person next to you tonight. I wrote it down. Oh, good job, Tim. So Lily, she and then she asks if anyone around here has ever killed a woman. She starts asking questions, finally, after and they're like, yeah, one of day. Course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she asks the detective that. Because the detective says, I'll be around every night. I'm like, okay. Yeah. You don't have a job or a home to deal with? Okay. Weird. Now weird the, the the lady dealer, she comes to visit. I I didn't see her before. So and, this and, is the woman who is the art dealer because they're all artists. The blind guy's a sculptor. The brother <laughs> paints circles. She, um, I gotta say, she comes into the studio. He's just putting clay together. She's like, "Marvelous, marvelous, Van Bridge." And then she goes over <laughs> to Emil's brother, who's just putting red paint on canvas. I don't know. <laughs> like, wonderful, marvelous, <laughs> marvelous. <laughs> And then she goes to Emil, who makes these sculptures, which at this point, I think this is maybe when I first figured out what he, what he does. <laughs> he makes these like two foot tall nude gold sculptures. That people love. I guess of people love it. Like, and she holds this thing up that like I've definitely seen for sale in $15 right. in the used furniture store near me. She's like, this is your masterpiece. <laughs> and she's with a guy who is like the, Baron. the most comical rich man, the Baron. Mm-hmm. He's he's dressed kind of like the penguin from the 1960s Batman TV show, Got but a with like a funny little mustache and a monocle. <laughs> he's like, I lo- I have I know your work by reputation, and he wants to buy the statue. And how much? I don't. They don't actually say how much it is, do they? I thought you were going to do the cur- currency kerner. I have twenty thousand. Currency, twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand. Okay, that I can actually do George's it. George's current currency kerner. Because <laughs> Tim, what twenty thousand dollars? It's easy. What's that worth today? A million. It's easy because I already did ten thousand dollars. No, uh, it would be worth two hundred and two hundred ten dollars, two hundred thousand, two hundred ten dollars and thirty two cents mm. today. Max. Uh, that's what he wants to buy it, which is that's that's a lot for like a little yeah, tiny statue because he doesn't want to pay. And it. well, and he, he the Baron's like, I I love the art. I don't love the price. Yes. And they're like, but in three <laughs> years it'll be worth more. He's like, yes, but now. And they talk about it and. So he agrees to buy it, and then the Jeff Goldblum brothers like, Max. "No, you can't." I know. His name is Max, by the way. Emil's brother is Max. I like that you tell me that because I'm never going to remember that. <laughs> I'm going to break a point of not remembering that. <laughs> yeah, they fight about it, and he takes the statue away. 
PT runs off with the statue, and like this guy was really <laughs> just about to give them the equivalent of two hundred ten thousand dollars. Yeah. And he's just like, all right, well, I'll come back later. And he like winks at the camera and like sh- walks off like the penguin. <laughs> right. And the art dealer lady is like, she she's turns. like, you remember, you owe me money. Yep. Money. I know. And she says it's $10,000, which that's what I did to the George. Play the music again. George's George Curry Carter. Curry Carter. Uh, it was uh, ten thousand dollars, which is worth one hundred thousand one hundred and five dollars and sixteen cents today. Nice, yeah, that's a lot of money to owe somebody, though. It is, it is. Yeah, especially a guy who lives in a mansion with no outside, and and somebody might be killing ladies there. Who do you think it is, George? Somebody's. Ki- so, mm, I mean, <laughs> I have to say that the Jeff Goldblum brother, whose name I purposely not saying, he seems Matt. pretty suspicious. Yep. No. But then also, I got to say that Havnish guy. Of course. Is that his name? Havmir. Hajmir. He's pretty suspicious. Sure. And is the blind guy really blind? <laughs> and what's up with that police detective hanging around? And is anybody going to fish the little person's body out of the pool? <laughs> He's being to break apart. Yes. Which brings us to the pool. Because they go swimming brings again. Brings us to the pool. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't mention above the pool is some wire sculpture. It's, it's a ball. It's like a circle. It's a circle. It's, oh, my God, oh, Tim. It's a circle. A circle. Bill, it's a circle. Bill it's Keen a circle made while it. <laughs> Bill Keen made it. Yeah. And uh, what's her face? Lily swimming underneath it. And, and you we know. see a close up of a, a a wire fraying and it snaps and the the thing falls in the pool. Nowhere kind of near. near her. Yeah, kind of near. Not, her. Yeah, not. It's she's in the pool while it falls, but it's nowhere near. Her. She Freestyle. screams. Yeah. Like I wrote, she screams like how I would scream if I was eating a tuna fish sandwich <laughs> and found half a severed finger in it. Ugh. Like she's like, ah, ah. like, <laughs> yes. I'm like, lady, okay, I get it. It almost fell on you. Probably wouldn't even have killed you if, or even really hurt you. No. It was just wire. Yeah. Yeah. Wire circle. And there, and yeah. And uh, what's his name? Hajmir is like, perhaps one of your guests cut it. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> Being helpful there, Hajmir. Good <laughs> job. Are. But Emil, he's yelling at Max for still yes. being brain damaged, and Max is upset and doesn't want to go back to the asylum. They have this whole thing. And uh, we also learn that the rich man has gone back to whatever country he is the baron no, of the airport, without right? buying it. Didn't she say, you better get out there and convince him before he gets on a plane? Oh, you're right. Cause, airport. Oh, yeah, I didn't take that. Yeah, airport. whole airport scene. Emil, uh, Emil ends up kissing Helene again secretly, and he says to her. Oh, I didn't catch that. Oh yeah, like that when, I, I think when I, the pool uh, thing happened, he has to take her to the car. They stop and kiss. He kisses Helene, and and Emil oh, is like, then, yeah. Helene, you could turn snow black." You yeah, this? I wrote that down. What the fuck does that mean? Because he's tempting her. Why? But why does that mean turn snow black? Because she's evil, George. Because you know what? Here's my official list. Oh, <laughs> the official list. Other things that Helene could turn black besides snow. Yep. So right. it's a quick list. Right. Other things that could turn snow black. All right. Boy, this is this is potentially very dangerous, Tim. <laughs> well, what number right. one? The, the movie White Christmas. Oh, reference to past Eddie Vimkoist <laughs> last episode. Go listen to it, folks. Number two, the Oscars. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Number three, Robert Rauschenberg's mm-hmm. White Paintings. <laughs> wow, very heady. <laughs> very, this is what we real. This is when people listening home remember. Oh yes, he is a cartoonist for the New Yorker, isn't he? <laughs> yes. Uh, the White Album when it comes out in a few years. Oh, nice, nice. All right. <laughs> uh, that nice white fence that Tom Sawyer Sawyer got all those other kids to paint for him. Oh, Tom Sawyer's coming up a lot. Is Tom Sawyer going to make the list? Who knows, folks? And many people don't know this, but before mm-hmm. he met Helene, Hitler's mm-hmm. mustache was white. <laughs> gotcha, George. <laughs> I gotcha. Similarly, before he met Helene, Charlie Chaplin's mm-hmm. mustache was a virgin. I'll just take mm-hmm. that out. Yeah. No, no, keep that in. I want you to keep in the reference to because I want to know how one's mustache is a virgin. <laughs> I'm not telling. We're moving on. All right. This was going to be a great episode. I could feel it. I forgot to say that. <laughs> so the phone, the phone rings and it finally works. It's Helene calling Lily. You must come to the airport so I can tell you who's killing all the girls. And I'm like, just tell her. Why do you have to go to the yeah. airport? So Lily goes to meet. I would guess as a person just watching, I'm like, it's trapped. Yeah, yeah. She goes like, to the oh, airport. You're gonna kill me. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. There's crazy scenes of her walking around the airport, and there's a man with a, a cane following her. We never see again or yep. since. Is that supposed to be the blind nope. man? I don't know. I was wondering because we didn't mention. Yeah, the uh, what's his name? Suki Baduki. Mm-hmm. Did he Suki have a cane? Van? 
I don't think he had, he a, had cane. a cane throughout. Oh. It, it, it's his cane looks like it looks like a uh, a gnarled piece of wood. Oh, but inside the airport, and this is sixty four. So inside the airport, Helene calls. Yeah, uh-huh. Lily, did you notice that? And says, "I'm I'm outside yes. the airport now. Come out the outside the airport." And then you know, she calls. I didn't understand calls, anything that was happening. She here. calls her on the outside of the airport and tells her to come and meet her on the inside of her suitcase. And then she calls her from the inside of the suitcase and tells her to meet her at the coffee shop and. So that's I'll be next to an old man reading Family Circus in the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Brought it all back together. It all Sorry. ties together. So Family Circus really taking a drum of this episode <laughs> of Seti Bimco. Her and the detective go back out to the house, which we're never going to see the house. They just walk through the woods. Uh, yeah. He disappears. Yeah. Uh, she it's runs to a phone the, booth in the, the woods. Look at the fucking Everglades. <laughs> yep. There's a phone booth out there. And, uh, oh, that's when she called the detective. Sorry. He's already there. He disappears. Yep. I don't know what's happening. Well, they're walking together <clears throat> to go there because she's pretty convinced she knows what's happening. Although we still don't. She yeah. does end up speaking to. Man, she speaks to the blonde lady. <clears throat> I don't know what happens. Then she disappears. Then she and the detective are walking through the woods to get to Emile's place. And oh. the detective just disappears. Yep. And she goes to like he's just, a, a, a diner. Like in the a middle of the woods, diner. too. And there's a lady in there wanting to do the twist. Who's literally, this is, he's not lying. No. There's just this lady, she's like, like, she, like, Lily comes in, <laughs> like, she's got like mud wrapped all over her face. She's, her clothes are torn. There's like scratches on her. And she's like, I need help. And Lily's like, wait, don't you want to do the twist first? And they're playing like the generic music version of the twist because they're not paying for music rights in this movie. I, I, someone's asking me, that, uh, I went to the phone and, and then he, oh, relax, honey, relax, honey. Take a load off your feet. Lily's like, that's old. Haven't you heard this new band, the Beatles? <laughs> anyway. Wow. And then she eventually the woman's like, wait, you really are upset, <laughs> <know>. doll. <laughs> Do you want can't. some coffee? And she runs out, right? Yeah, she just screams. Lily just runs out. Runs, ah, out. runs away. <laughs> Then, in what was a clever bit of filmmaking, and I'm using clever ironically, <clears throat> uh, the woman who was the woman who works at the cafe, who was so eager to be doing the twist, she looks to you, the viewer, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Oh, welcome! Come on in. Would you like some coffee?" And she stares at you expectantly. And then she starts screaming in terror. And then we see a close-up of coffee dripping on the ground, and then we see her with a with a knife in her chest. Yep. She's dead. It's a good clue. All makes sense. I, th- I think she's the first person we actually see die in this movie, right? <clears throat> yeah. Otherwise, it's all like weird photos. We're being told like, yeah, she's in Mexico. Wait, she's not in Mexico. <laughs> Circles make you crazy. And then and then, she just goes back to the house and all, there's dead bodies everywhere. Yeah. That's basically I, I, all her d- friends. It, well, none of them are her friends. They're Emile's friends. She finds she finds Helene's body dead, who last we saw was at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> Does she find the blind guy dead? Uh, no, no. It's not all the women, I think. Because then Hodge, Hodge shows up, and of course she's like, oh no, are you the killer? And Hodge, you mean, Hodge, you mean, Hodge, Hodge, the, Hodge um, the black faced Indian man. Yeah, yeah, the offensive character. Yeah. Do you want me to just tell what the whole secret is? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hodge. It's oh, so the, Emil does come, and you realize Emil's the one killing them all to protect Lily. Yeah. And Hodge actually becomes kind of a hero because he throws a knife into the back of Emil. But because Emil is a, yeah, he's the killer. He's like a Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. The, <clears> as <throat> the detective guy shows up to say, and he says things he couldn't possibly know, he was like a Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. And he really did love you. He wanted to turn over a new leaf. Yeah. But his artistic side, when he was an <laughs> artist, he became a murderer. <laughs> he's like, like, oh wow. He was like two personalities. He was like conflicted. He's like Captain yep. Kirk in that episode of Star Trek where he got split into good and evil. <laughs> it's not on your list, and, huh? Uh, nope, nope. Oh, you're trying to go for this now. <laughs> no. I see what you're doing. But okay. Hodge is not quite solely a her- totally a hero because don't you think he, he kind of said, I, I know, he kills people, right? Yeah, and he's been covering up yeah. for him all this time. So he saved one woman for some yeah. reason. Yeah, yeah. Hodge, you're still going to go to jail, Hodge. You're an accessory to murder. Yeah. Sorry. Also, you're a racist wearing brown face. <laughs> yeah. um, 
and the movie, like, so, like, after Hodge throws the knife into Emir and saves her, and then the cop suddenly shows up, he's like, and we learn where he went. He's like, yeah, he beat me up and knocked me unconscious. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, she was walking hand <clears throat> in hand with this guy. Like, how did that happen? I, and then um, he says, like, yeah, he really did love you. And then the movie just ends. Yep. Boom. Like that. It does. No credits. No nothing. <laughs> the next movie started playing. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> this was great. And so I loved it. Was, I loved it. I, I will say this, Tim. <laughs> to represent Florida, you found a very <laughs> yeah. appropriate film. <laughs> You did good, Florida. <laughs> Way to go, Florida. <laughs> Revenge. Wherever you are, wherever you're hiding, I'll find you. Revenge. One of us will die. One of us will die. I will not stay. I will not let Cindy take Revenge. Revenge. Who? Have... Uh, it's most likely from this movie to, to bring an American snack to a diner in France. <laughs> well, I'm going to say the brother of Emile because he was a Frenchman. Who had no trace of a French accent. Right. And so he's going to, because he's he's a fake French person. He, he has brain damage, as we he know. He does have brain damage. Yep. So, and oh, I what know, is the I American know snack he brings? I know George. What, what, what? He sneaks some French fries because he's, he's insane. He wants to see what <laughs> French fries become when they go to France. So he, oh, my God. He's like, he's basically, his insanity. Uh, manifests itself as the conservative mindset circa 19, I mean, circa 2001. <laughs> yes. Where they, and he's like, we call these freedom fries. Mm-hmm. Well, yep. I, that's what I call them now, George, not to get too political. That's, oh, you still do. I forget that. No. Yeah. People don't realize this, but as Tim is recording, <laughs> he's in front of a big American flag. Sometimes you'll hear like little bits of audio dropping out. That's because that's when Tim's firing his air 15s in the air no. yelling yeehaw. Taking all this yep. out. Nah, I'm not going to leave this. I was going to say, I call them freedom fries because they instilled in their constitution that women can have abortions. So I was, I was throwing it in conservatives' Ooh, faces saying, yeah, freedom fly, fries. That's they good. got freedom. Good. Yeah. Take, <clears> let, <throat> don't let people ever say that Seti Bimco doesn't fight for what's that, right. I'm taking that out. No, you keep it all. This all stays in. You got to keep this all in. It's all good. So he gets if to you France. you cut this, this episode's too short. Yep. He gets to France. Uh, uh, and he orders. We don't see onion, him. He runs through onion, the woods until he's in France. Onion rings. I can't say. And there's circles. He's like, circles. Oh my God. And he, he you know, he can't take it. He's sucker, sucker bleu. And he starts speaking French. And uh, that, that's the revenge French had on him for, for, for pretending not to be French. <laughs> like his brother. Yeah. For pretending. That was good. <clears throat> that was good. <clears throat> Help me. What, what am I trying to say? Uh, that was French's, I don't know. France's revenge on him. For uh, I didn't think we're, for sneaking we're doing American fries into France. Fr- American France, France. <laughs> freedom fries. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah, it's a revenge <laughs> story. I know it's a story. Woo! Okay, all right, <laughs> it's over. All right, can I go first? That was not a story. I am, but I am, <laughs> it was not. <laughs> go. I'm gonna go first because mine's gonna be short. Start the music. Here we go. Now you <laughs> may have noticed listening to us recounting <laughs> honeymoon of horror. You might be like, I uh, I heard you talk. <laughs> I heard you say a lot of shit. I have no idea what this story was about or what the plot line was. And you'd be right. Yes, you'd be right. And you're kind of left to like kind of fill in some real significant gaps. Like were the mur- were there murders being committed at all? Yeah. <clears throat> was that even a real police captain? Who knows? Or a detective? <laughs> um, was it really all Emil done? Emil can't defend himself. He's got a knife in him. He's dead. Who killed these people? Well, there is a clue in this movie. This is one of those revenge sequels, Tim. It's a little bit of a revenge side story. Oh. So we know that the mangled bodies of women are apparently being found with circles dug into them. Oh, we right? forgot that I part. I guess that's what's being... Yep. Yeah, we, did, we didn't... It's probably important. Into their you, head. Yep. And there is a bit of dialogue that reveals who the true murderer is. Mm. Yeah, it's not Emil. He also has brain damage. In fact, everyone that you see in this movie has brain damage except for one person. And that is Helene. Oh, yeah. And the reason why Helene is all beaten up, it's not because of a mild, what is a minor sex maniac. It's because the night before, she gave us a clue in her big line of dialogue. What are you going to do? Well, I was, I went home to moon over you and put a couple of silver bullets in me. Hmm. Because Tim. She's a werewolf. Helene was a werewolf. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Why? She would. Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because you know that little guy, the little person? Mm-hmm. 
he was a Dracula. Um, and if everybody knows werewolves and Draculas are arch enemies, wherever are. you find one, where there's a vampire, there's always going to be a werewolf to fight. The two of them have been waging a battle in proxy, like like chess masters, in this group of weird, stupid Florida friends from 1964. <laughs> and she goes out. And yeah, you know what? She's she's the leader of the pack. She's got wolf mentality. She thought she was the alpha female for Emil. And so whenever he brings home a new lady, she goes and kills a bunch of the other ones. And she kills them by using her wolf claws because everybody knows, just like how wolves use their sharp fingernails yeah. to kill prey, she uses her sharp claws to drill little holes in their heads. Circles, if you will. Oh. Yep. Circles. And her revenge was uh, at the end when we see her stabbed because it wasn't silver. She's fine. She just gets up and she lives a happy life. She moves to, uh, oh, Detroit. Let's say Idaho. Idaho. <laughs> I like Detroit better. Let's say Detroit. <laughs> I went with Idaho because that's where she suggested that what's her name went to. So these were like all like freaks. It was a different different version of freaks. Almost. Yeah, it was like a secret where this was a secret werewolf movie. A secret werewolf. Anytime and you were looking on the screen, like that's why they wouldn't show the outside of the house because constantly on the outside of the house, it was just tons of werewolves and vampires running around. <laughs> like we can't show that. It'll give the movie away. We got to <laughs> let people not really know. <laughs> so they keep all the stuff inside. The woods was okay because the werewolves and the, be- the vampires couldn't get through that. But that's that's it. Oh, I think they shot the outside of the coffee place, right? I was like, wow, that's the one location. I, I don't think they did. I thought I, I saw they a coffee her walk shop. in. She I walks in the door. There's like a jukebox there. And who do you think killed her? A werewolf. Right. Huh. That's why she screamed Amazing. in horror. If if a good looking a good looking Bruce Campbell esque <laughs> Frenchman comes up to you, you don't scream in terror. That's, but a werewolf? I'm glad you did that and not Emile Zola, Captain Captain America's arch enemy. Especially because it's actually Arnim Zola, not Emile Zola. It's, yes. it's Emile Zola. It's, it's definitely not, Tim. <laughs> All right. That's mine. Very short. It sucked. I'm not even going to be shorter and shorter until it's one sentence, George. This is my challenge to myself. I can't wait. I can't. Let's do it. This one's only be 3,000 words? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Start the music. So there was a man who was watching this movie in 1964. Mm-hmm. Of who he was of Indian descent, he was very insulted oh. by the depiction of the screen, <laughs> and he started calling the director of this movie Irwin Bayer all the time. Uh-huh. This man's name was Rohan Gita, and every night he'd call Irwin. What was his name? Rohan Gita. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and every night he tried to call Irwin and tell him that he wanted to kill him for his super racist depiction of a man, perhaps in brownish face, saying things like "Sahib" and "Yes, Master." And creepily staring at women as they sleep. Mm-hmm. But he could not talk or tell him because Rohan was conflicted. Haj did turn out to be a hero at the end because he saved Lily, but he had obviously let Emil kill many other women. So mm-hmm. he just called on the phone and, and didn't say anything. And Rohan's like, who's this? Nobody? Yeah. Nobody? Oh. <laughs> From <the> Family Circus? <laughs> uh, I, was, uh, I was... I will say... I was not expecting Family Circus to play <laughs> such a key and integral part to tonight's episode. <laughs> so, uh, so he gave up on that, and he eventually Rohan decided to simply pray to Brahma and Shiva, and especially pray to Dita, the Hindu goddess of vengeance, uh-huh, uh-huh. so he could get vengeance on him. So, you know, uh, yeah, as they do, he sacrificed a goat and drew a pentagon on the floor and all the typical stuff that they do. Tim, you know, I, I feel like this itself has gotten very racist. <laughs> really? Wait, wait. I don't, th- you know I don't think Hindus, famed vegetarians, sacrifice goats and draw <laughs> pentagrams. Well, 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 you know, then Rohan Gitu, he, he heard about, he heard this racist host on a podcast called Seti Bimko, Part 2 The Revenge. Oh. And, uh, Is it, it Kevin Cablasto? Ins- insinuating that he would sacrifice goats and draw pentagrams, you know. This, okay. So uh-huh. he decided he wanted to call this stupid person. Uh, oh, wait a minute. My, no, is that my phone? My phone's ringing? <laughs> Let me get my phone, George. Tim, this is very unprofessional. Yeah. Hello? Hello? No one's there, George. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. I'm going to shut this door. Oh, my God. That's my end of my story. I'm not going to say anything else. That's very creepy. <laughs> Tim, very creepy. I feel unhinged. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like taking out my circle template and my compass and just drawing circles now. You know, because they, they say... You know, art is all often yeah. only a manifestation of insanity. So. Oh my God, that's true. Wow, I'm afraid for myself yeah. every day. Let me say that was a character I was acting. I know if you're Hindu, you don't sacrifice animals. 
that was a character. Yep. So that I could do that meta story. Yep, that was pretty good. I'm putting another meta pretty... level on top of it there. It's like that's not people, me. People, people listening right now. <laughs> be wherever they don't know what's going on. They're freaked out. You know what? No, it'd be awesome. Somebody's like home alone listening to this. <laughs> they lift up their drink to take, they see a circle like left on the, know. on the table. They're like what? Then the phone rings and they just jump rings. out a window. Yep. 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 Ooh, man. This is a good movie. <laughs> Let me, movie podcast, but that was good. I like that movie, George. Yeah. I like that movie. I know you did. I know you did. <laughs> I wrote That's several it. notes how this is a very Tim Hamilton movie. <laughs> is this a list? Oh, you're done. No, I, I didn't. I, I actually, I will be honest here. Like, I know you love this movie. I couldn't find enough. There was, it was so fleeting. I couldn't find enough <laughs> to really sink my teeth in to write a list. Like I could have shoveled it in any old list. Yeah. But they just, it was just like, it was, I needed more. Well, we'll have more next week because. Mm, no. What are you going to, what, what movie did you pick? All right. So Tim. I know up until now I've been kind of going more or less alphabetically. And uh, this week we did get a really big capital A letter state. Like this is, you know, Florida is, that's a famous place. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out and grab California. Okay. And the movie we're doing is the most dangerous movie ever made. Really? The famous movie starring Tippi Hedren, (gasps) Roar. Oh, no. Have you heard of this film? I have. This is documentary. Roar. It's not a documentary. <laughs> oh, There's a documentary not? about it if you want to watch this as a supplement. Oh. But the movie Roar is about a uh, a family living in Africa. The movie is actually filmed in California, though, who mm-hmm. are trying to save a bu- – they're running a big cat preserve, and uh, they find that a, a pride of lions has taken over their place. Oh, okay. And what makes this movie so noteworthy I know. is uh, the director was like, yeah, I want to film this movie. And everyone's like, you can't. That's insane. You can't have 50 large cats that are wild and untrained around. Yeah. He's like, try to stop me. <laughs> this movie was filmed for years. Yes. There, the director almost lost his arm mm-hmm. to gangrene. Oof. Tippi Hedren was bit on the head by a lion yep. and partially scalped. The cinematographer was scalped by a lion. Oof. Well, say, uh, don't, don't, don't give it all away. We'll, it's we'll it's just it. this movie is f- like it's filled of real violence of cats really fucking up people. And it's called Roar with an exclamation point. OK. Available on YouTube and also for rent on, I think, Amazon Prime. But <gasps> yeah, yeah. why not watch it? Why not watch it for free <laughs> on YouTube? Then? Uh, read the book. What? Yeah. Or read the book. The book was called uh, Splinters of the Mind's Eye by Alan <laughs> Dean Foster. Yeah. <laughs> I think this movie is loosely based on an old Mark Twain story. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait. wait. That's another one for the. All right. We talk so long. Wait. So listen, listen to Sunny Bimco any place you can hear podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram and threads and Blue Sky. Uh, check out our website, Sunny Bimco, part two, The Revenge. That's I, we do have a blog there. I try to put something once a week, but. Right now, I don't have time to do a lot on there. And email us. Oh, I should check. Did we get email? Yeah, let's see. Any emails? Come on, emails. Uh, Nope. Oh, wait. There is one. Who's this from? Oh. Let me open it. Oh, my God. It's just a big circle. Yeah. (laughs) Ah, Gotcha. (laughs) (laughs) All right. But you can email us. Sedi Bimco with the E at gmail.com. And as I said. All right. That's it. But like us. Give us stars. Make Give your own stars. version of the SETI Bing Co. Oh, well, I'm going to make those. Yeah. When I have time. All right. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, Is everybody. This has been a Pity Party Line production. Party line. It's a party line. Oh, my God. Wait, Tim, can target. I actually read you? Can I read you something about Boner's Ark oh, that no. you should probably cut out? Okay. Okay, I went to the Wikipedia. Listen, to the, and they're listing the characters. Listen to this thing that's on Wikipedia about. You remember the character Priscilla the pig? She yeah, actually had a bikini, right? Yep. <laughs> this is what is on Wikipedia as we record. Priscilla is a ugly female pig oh. and girlfriend of Dum Dum the gorilla. Priscilla <laughs> also pursues a romantic interest with any other male, especially the Duke Penguin. But without success due to her ugliness. Wow. She believes herself to be very beautiful, romantic, and sensual, 
and physically attacks those who tell her the sad reality of her. She vainly dreams of being a beautiful artist and movie or music star. She wears a ridiculous black bikini in which she look, believes she looks very sensual and voluptuous, but which she only manages to highlight the total non-existence of beautiful feminine attributes Whoa. in her ugly and chubby body. Who wrote this? She is so ugly that she causes almost all the males of the Ark to vomit with disgust. You're making this up. A beauty she only has her name, Priscilla, and the tasty taste of her pig meat, but the latter could be enjoyed only by killing and eating it. <laughs> Kablasto. <laughs> Kevin Cablasto, you gotta lay off boners up. 